In today's video, I'm going to walk you through the advanced sections of the digital tutorial provided by the Lord of the Rings adventure card game. Join me now and learn more about the nuanced play that can be had here on Legendary Tactics. So today we're going to cover the advanced and the nuanced concepts in the tutorial. Um, this video will be a little bit longer simply because uh, the tutorials last a little bit longer um, <clears throat> in this. Uh, there's a lot of obviously narrative and all that stuff. They're actually very useful tutorials to play, um, but watching them, I'm, I'm hoping that you'll be able to get a lot from uh, this video and this walkthrough. Um, however, I know that uh, there's a lot of kind of varied information that gets thrown your way here. So uh, hopefully uh, I'll be able to explain it uh, clearly and break it down for you. So um, so our goal in this uh, quest is to fend off the creatures of the night for four rounds. That just means we have to survive for four rounds. And uh, we'll look first at the Muck Adder, who likes to attack the character with the lowest health. And... Uh, this is where we can utilize uh, something called defense and guard as uh, as a as a tactic to uh, manage how uh, your the enemy uh, attacks you, um, and uh, you can protect your weaker uh, characters. You can protect your characters with lower health. So, um, so let's take a look at this. So we're going to see Glowin here. Now Glowin. As, as it says here, defense grants the character the guard keyword until they take an action or are attacked. So we're going to uh, do that uh, for Glow and we're going to uh, activate the, uh, the defense button. So you, you right click on the character and then there's a little shield that appears right by the resource uh, tracker uh, for your side. So you click on that and it gives you this little shield thing that you can see and it basically means that uh, melee attacks can only be directed at units that have the guard active so the muck adder does not have a choice but to attack glow in there now when there's the guard keyword is active melee attacks also deal uh, reciprocal damage so in other words uh, both units attack each other and both take damage and so we were able to take out the uh, the muck uh, adder uh, easily there and that's uh, there's a point later in the tutorial where I'll, uh, where I'll show you how that's useful um, so after the uh, unit is uh, is attacked with guard then the guard effect ends and that's uh, that's it so oh, all right friend. so if you look at the objective here as well there's a uh, an hourglass with four on it so that's we can't interact with that objective you just have to wait until it counts down now Gimli has a conditional ability so the first time a character takes damage for the round, uh, Gimli gets ticked off and <laughs> basically gets an extra attack factor. So uh, and it's, it's a, an attack bonus. And uh, that happened when his friend Glowin was damaged. And so when we look at uh, Gimli, we, uh, we can see the, the bonus there. So now we're going to use that bonus to attack the uh, snake there and get, get rid of him. Now another Muck Adder turns up. Okay, now, um, we're, like any tutorial I, that I've seen these days, a lot of times what they do is they they give the uh, give the player the ability to kind of finish the scenario and kind of you know get used to the uh, the scenario and uh, and how it works. So um, so out of all these, I think the uh, this dwarf here seems to be the most useful. So get uh, this dwarf into play. And uh, we can use Dwarf for an attack. So everyone passes. We're going to add this um, uh, this uh, Seldwin Traveler as well. Might as well do, do a bit of damage there. And because we've completed the round, the Hourglass subtracts one. Uh, as it says here, the, the objective is locked and timed, and that means we can't interact with it. So we just have to survive until the Hourglass runs down. Three more rounds to go. And we'll begin with the upkeep phase here. And there's nothing much to uh, say there other than uh, drawing a new card. So now some uh, units have the guard keyword. Uh, and so entering them into play gives them the guard uh, ability right off the, the bat, which is, uh, which is very handy. Um, now, Forest Protector Head Guard active, so the Forest Buyer couldn't attack uh, anyone else and also received reciprocal damage. 
And because the uh, the forest protector did get hurt, then uh, Gimli did get that uh, that boost, uh, that bonus. So we'll we'll use some. Um, actually, we'll use this uh, traveler here to attack this other spider uh, before uh, that spider is able to uh, uh, to attack. So there we go. Yeah, Sauron takes uh, their turn and gives a hatchling spider. It's fairly easily disposed of with uh, Bilbo. And another spider arrives, uh, and uh, we will um, hit the spider with that dwarf. Not much else we can do there, but uh, but to protect allies with low health, you can activate defense on other characters. And so that's where we may have been able to save that guard is uh, by uh, with Glowin uh, activating the defense as the action and forces the spiders to... Uh, uh, to uh, deal with Gluin first, or at least attack Gluin first, but I'm not too worried about it in this uh, in this scenario in this tutorial. But obviously, that's going to be much more of a factor uh, down the road. Now, enemies can have the guard keyword as well, and it functions the same as with other characters. So even though I'd love to take out that other spider there, uh, unfortunately, I can't. I need to. Uh, hit uh, the spider that is being uh, that is has the guard ability all right and now we are down to two rounds left for the uh in defending against the creatures of the night and we grab another card here as well um now when units with the guard keyword ready during upkeep uh they activate defense as a free action so if they've got the guard ability then that uh that really really helps them because uh it gives you that that defense up and running at the beginning of each round now jarrah wolf has a ranged attack and so that is a very very useful Beware. capability we're going to illustrate that in a sec so we got a muck adder up next now muck adder is a pretty strong uh, creature now jarrah wolf has the ranged ability and that means that guard can be ignored and so uh, Jerwolf can be used to attack the Muck uh, Adder in spite of the, the defense and the guard being up at the moment. So tends to uh, get uh, some revenge there from the, uh, from the spider, but there you are. Um, we're going to attack this one because we don't have a choice. But luckily that was one of the ones that was going to attack next anyway. All right, and now Gimli can finally hit that spider. Um, now we get uh, Eyes of the Forest that gives uh, Sauron some more uh, resources, but it is otherwise not an issue. And uh, we'll just take out the spider here. And uh, nothing much left to do at the moment, so we're going to end the phase and pass. And uh, Sauron uh, puts the spider on there and passes. And we've got to survive for one more round. I think we're doing okay. Everything revives, and uh, we get our resources back and so forth. Now, we also get another Jarwolf. Now, it's important, Jarwolf, if you see the little gem symbol beside Jarwolf's name, that means that you can only have one Jarwolf in play at any given time. Uh, that's what they call unique. Um, now, if the Jarwolf on the board dies <laughs> or is eliminated before uh, at any point, then I can play the second Jarwolf uh, card and get uh, that back into play. The other th consideration is the bat swarm has uh, something called flying, and that you can see is kind of hovering there. The the units kind of hovering there in in, uh, in one spot. So the the flying uh, ability means that you cannot target the bat swarm with melee attacks. However, you can use ranged attacks and other flying units to uh, take them down. So Jarwolf is perfect to take out the bat swarm in advance. Now, there's another uh, feature on their card called, called Revenge, and that means when uh, the unit is defeated, there's a, a special ability triggered. So in this case, it summoned one Black Forest Bats when that unit was uh, destroyed. All right, and a spider attacks poor Jarwolf. And uh, we need to... Now, we can't uh, attack those bats with... Uh, with any of the uh, the units here, so actually, you know what? We got we're going to attack with Bilbo Lazy lob. and the spider, and now we have Spies of Shadow, <laughs> and this is an enemy that can affect something called threat and the threat meter. So we're going to take a quick look at that now. 
and you'll see there's two bars that have just appeared, one on the left, one on the right. We're gonna look at the one on the right first. The threat is a measure of the risk that you face during a quest, and Sauron directs more attention towards you as the number grows. If your threat grows to 50, your quest fails and you lose, okay? Um, and along the way, there are some events that, that are, are triggered by different levels of threat. So um, the starting threat is equal to the combined value from the three heroes you bring on the quest. So if you look here, Bilbo has a threat of 8 plus Glowin's 11 plus uh, Gimli's uh, 10, okay? So that's where the, the threat level begins. And uh, so on the threat meter, you'll see it, it'll go uh, be added up here. Now, normally it's done at the start of the quest, but we're just doing it now. Um, and during the, que the quest, you gain one threat at the end of each round. Some cards, like Spies of Shadow, can add even more. So you want to generally take out these uh, these. Uh, characters that add to the threat because they can force you to end the quest sooner than you'd like. There's also some events that uh, pop up when the threat level reaches a certain level on the meter. Okay, and most uh, quests have three threat events, and uh, we'll take a look at those. So if we look at this one here, so once the threat reaches 30, then uh, it's unexpected company and a giant spider turns up at 2 6, so not easy to get rid of. At threat 37, we get Thorny Underbrush, uh, where two damage is dealt to three different random characters. Again, not a good thing. And uh, the, the, if, when threat reaches 44, uh, it's going to uh, uh, trigger Weak from Exhaustion, which is grant one resource cost to each uh, to player cards this round. So just making things more expensive. So once again, the quest fails if you reach 50 threat, so it's important to keep track of the the total and control it when you can, so take out Spies of Shadow. Now again, we can't <clears throat> um, attack the flying creatures. We don't have any ranged uh, 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 heroes, uh, any, any heroes with the ranged ability. So this is where defense can come in. So if you right click on, say, Gimli, um, we can use Gimli for defense. And that means that we're gonna be able to do reciprocal damage to uh, any creatures that, uh, that attack. And we get a chance to kind of absorb the, the, the hits that would be coming from these creatures. So, um, because we can't attack them at a range, at range, there's really no choice. Now we'll, we'll we'll take out this spider here, and Sauron's taking some extra resources, which is great. Um, but other than that, at the moment we can't really do much of anything. So we're gonna pass. And uh, Sauron's going to play uh, the, uh, the Growing Darkness, which is going to give extra resources to Sauron. So now when units have the guard keyword active, not only can you not make, uh, not only can, can't you make melee attacks on anyone else, you also can't engage any objectives. So that's also key. Now we did take, uh, take out that uh, crow, which was perfect. And we've completed the goal for the location, so we're gonna travel now to avoid the looming threat. And so we, yeah, first of all, upkeep is, is triggered. And so is the giant spider. All right. So now we're gonna to wanna to travel as soon as we can, but first of all, before that, um, if you don't travel promptly after completing a location goal, you draw Sauron's uh, ire in the form of the looming threat, a locked hazard that produces an increasing amount of threat every round. So it's a compounding thing. And you can engage or resolve the looming threat. The best way to deal with it is to just avoid it, travel before it happens. Um, now, when you travel, uh, if you recall from the previous tutorial, re any readied enemies can attack and end of events trigger. So it's a good idea to neutralize uh, enemies and remove end effects before you travel. Um, so the giant spider is uh, is a problem. So we're going to use uh, Jarwolf to uh, to deal with it. Okay, and Jarwolf made a ranged attack. Uh, the reciprocal da so the reciprocal damage from the giant spider's guard ability did not trigger. So that's important to uh, keep in mind. And uh, we are going to want to play the Woodland Courier. And I know we haven't traveled yet, but the, this is because it's a tutorial. We want to make sure that we're doing this uh, correctly. All right. Now, 
What's interesting as well is the flying units, when they're exhausted, when they've been used, they land and they can be attacked like any other targets. Their flying ability only applies until they attack. Uh, so that's a very key thing. And now we can use the willpower for more than just engaging objectives. You can use it to trigger something called fate events. And this is that meter along on the left side. Okay, these are miraculous events to help you on your quest. And the fate meter shows uh, any available fate events. So instead of spending that willpower on an, on an objective, you can spend it on the fate meter. And so we'll take a look to see what the fate meter event is. And this is the River Daughter's Aid. And we would gain Daughter of the Nimrodl. Um, and uh, so not a tremendously powerful character, but um, uh, presumably useful. <laughs> so, uh, all right. So we're going to uh, open this cards view here and we're going to add the willpower to the uh, to the fate meter. Now you can do it with this button here, the little star, or you can drag the like, quote unquote, attack the fate meter, drag the woodland couriers uh, across to the fate meter like this and then it gives the uh, willpower to it and uh, that progresses so now um, that doesn't affect the uh, character's willpower score but it does affect uh, exhaust them and it counts as their action for the turn so now we're going to trigger the fate event so we're going to use the in the fate meter click the river daughter's aid to open the detail view and then confirm so we click here. Now the, the confirm is down here at the bottom of the of the event. It's a little hard to see. So you click on the green check mark there and you gain that card. Now it's a free action, so we can still take a, a regular action and play uh, Daughter of the Nimrodal. Do you hear the and Nimrodal, uh, Nim I guess, is actually the better way to say it. Uh, so uh, anyway, some, some cards have a special ability called power. So we're going to take a look at the... Uh, this is a unique ability you can activate once per round. And so this is, for example, the ability to heal. And when a character has a power available, you see this little uh, buzzsaw hurricane kind of symbol, that's their, their power ability. So we're going to use that to heal poor Glowin, who's taken a lot of uh, damage this uh, particular round. Uh, now using a power exhausts uh, the character um, and uses their action. Okay, but... Uh, all right, now we might say, hey, we need some more resources and Bilbo can actually steal resources. That's Bilbo's power. So we'll do that and steal some resources from Sauron, which is great. And now we've uh, completed the goal for this uh, location. So we now need to travel to avoid the looming threat. Now, the only thing is we want to uh, make sure that uh, there's no abilities or anything that are gonna trigger. Uh, and then we can travel and actually the looming th the so what we should have done there was actually uh, Kill those birds then the threat marker yeah. didn't uh, didn't go up, but um, I'm feeling confident in this tutorial that we're gonna be just fine so we're amid the adders now and uh, Some fate and threat events only appear at a single location So they can make a big difference as to how you can progress so what we're looking for is kind of a a diamond over a square and that's how you know and that's or, or maybe like a double thing here and that's how you notice uh, that they're location specific and uh, so uh, they can be played so you can play them separately though if you like so um, the majority of your cards belong to one of four spheres of influence okay essentially these are the suits of the game and I'm not exactly sure why the tutorial interrupts us at this point to tell us this but I guess uh, now is good a time as any so leadership, these are the purple cards. They represent the ability to inspire and command others, and they focus on gaining resources and playing allies. They're a jack of all trades and a master of none. Then we have lore, and I should point out as well, the, the bottom uh, uh, right of the card has a little symbol there, which can be handy in, in understanding the, uh, which, remembering which suit is which. Um, so lore represents wisdom and specialized knowledge. And this sphere uh, focuses on healing characters, exhausting enemies, and managing your card draw. And they have decent attack, but low health. Spirit is the blue suit, and it represents strength of will and aspects of the supernatural. And it focuses on managing threat, action manipulation, and building combos. And spirit cards have strong willpower, but low attack. And tactics is the martial, the, the mar represents martial prowess 
and tactical skill, and this sphere focuses on combat and managing direct damage. Tactics cards have strong attack but low willpower. And there are some uh, cards that are neutral, and they don't belong in any sphere of influence. These are the gray ones, and they can be included in any deck. So uh, with that little digression, um, now we can uh, just uh, proceed with the, uh, with the uh, tutorial here. So we're going to, uh, we want to take out one of those muck adders for sure. Lazy lob. Those things are pretty powerful. And we wipe out one of our allies, unfortunately. So uh, we're going to, but that again makes uh, Gimli very angry. So we'll take out that other serpent there. Now we have a bat swarm. So Jarwolf will be needed to take those out. And that creates the uh, flying bats as revenge um, and so now we can also look at our cards here we got some uh, some interesting uh, things here we can exhaust an ally for example and ready another character so that's really a handy a handy one I like that event so we can exhaust for example uh, uh, the healer here and then we can reactivate uh, Gimli at full strength so um, that's a very handy uh, handy card um, so now we have uh, another objective here. So these are uh, one rock adder enters play. So we're going to have to figure out how to best use the uh, the abilities here. Now, um, let's see. We're going to take out this uh, rock adder. I know he's already expended, but Sauron has passed. So we'll use this to advance the... Uh, uh, the the uh, objective there. Now I'll take a quick look at this. Now the fate event, uh, I don't know, it's draw one card. So eh, it's, it's good, but not necessarily uh, something we need to worry about for uh, for the tutorial here. So we're going to drop this uh, ally Strike down as well. And we're going to get rid of this particular objective thing there. And we're complete. And that is the, the end of the, uh, the advanced concepts. Uh, and so what we'll do very quickly here is we're just going to go into the nuanced concepts. I'm going to try and take care of this all in one go here. So you can see as they sort of add fate events and threat events and so forth, as well as all the creature abilities and allied abilities, etc. There's a, a fair amount to this game. Um, and uh, it's... It, there's something to uh, to think about with every one of them. So in this in this one, there's two lore heroes, and this gives us access to certain lore cards that you otherwise wouldn't be able to to use. So we'll take a look at at uh, these here. All right, so we get a bunch of cards, and uh, so we know how ally and event cards work, and so we're also going to uh, look at uh, things like attachment and event preparation. Okay, so we'll just do the uh, upkeep phase here. All right, so we're going to start with attachments. So Bilbo's cloak is going to be the the uh, first card that we're going to uh, to play. Okay, so we're going to play on Bilbo. There we go. And an attachment is is a card type representing armor, weapons, and special abilities, and you can equip uh, up to one of each. And if there's an attachment, you can see this purple lozenge here. Uh, that is an indicator that there is an attachment. And there's an attachment uh, tray here. So you can see which types of uh, uh, attachments the character has equipped. And uh, so we have uh, that there. So that's great. And now we can hover over the, the socket to see the attachments ability text. So you can see that... Uh, and take a look there. So minus one uh, resource gain to Sauron in this case. Okay, so now we're going to look at the preparation cards. And this is one where you play a card essentially that uh, sets up the uh, a future benefit. Um, and it triggers only after specific conditions are met. And then once uh, it's, it's until triggered, it's hidden from Sauron's view. Um, and so if we have a preparation card, you can see this little... Uh, uh, socket is filled and you know that it is ready to uh, to trigger now we've now facing a treachery card 
And Sauron's treachery cards are similar to the preparation cards. They're lying in wait, and it's only when we take a specific action that we know what's going to uh, to happen there. Okay. So, um, all right. So we do need to take out the uh, the guard here, the spider guard, uh, before we can do anything else. We've got uh, a card draw and uh, some options there, but we don't have any resources, so we're just going to have to... Uh, muddle through here, so we'll use Bilbo, I guess, to attack. And there's a bit of a reciprocal attack there. Now we don't want this dude to attack, so I'm gonna uh, take out that uh, that unit there. And we need to defeat uh, three spider units. So now, when that uh, uh, unit uh, uh, came into play, we had our preparation card there, so we were able to exhaust that unit all right and uh, now in the online play there's a if you see the little gear down here at the bottom right that's where the glossary comes into play and the glossary is very helpful for learning uh, concepts all right now we have a bit of uh, healing uh, available so we're going to heal bilbo and uh we also prevented one resource uh, from uh, Sauron. So now you start each quest with 30 cards and we draw from the deck each round. And if we draw um, all the cards before the end of the quest, you can only use whatever cards in, are in hand and play or available on the fate meter. So it's a, a one and done kind of thing. And don't forget you have gameplay options in addition to your heroes and your deck. The fate meter has effects that often come in handy. And some cards are tailored to specific spheres, as indicated by, by what they call the, the sphere level. So they have potent effects for their cost, but including them in your deck requires two or even three heroes of that sphere. So that's where that number is on the bottom uh, right. So the Hobbit Bounder has guard. That seems uh, reasonably, uh, reasonably good. Um, is there anyone we need to protect? Well, I don't know. I don't think so in particular um, we've only got three resources though so let's uh let's add this hobbit sure, bounder delays, oh treachery triggered ones. so after you play a card discard one random card from your hand so that is that's not good so um now again on the digital version you've had you have the history which shows the the, the cards uh that were played and discarded uh, and uh, that gives you kind of an idea of what, uh, if you need to go back and see exactly what happened. So that's handy. And we have to defeat one more spider unit, I believe. Uh, so we'll let Bilbo do the honors. Or maybe we need to defeat one more. So we'll use our new ally. And low on supplies. So every time, this is a big threat. Every time uh, I play a card, the threat level goes up. So that isn't good. So, uh, well, although we have uh, Rossiel's, uh, or sorry, not Rossiel, sorry, uh, Arwen's um, willpower is quite good. So we're going to get rid of that objective and we're going to kill off this spider. And we've completed. Uh, the goal for this location, we need to travel right away so we can avoid the looming threat. All right. Sensing the imminent and arrival. Once again, a bit of uh, uh, of uh, narrative and a bit of chit chat there. And this is the final encounter. Okay, so uh, we'll go and do the upkeep. You can see there's a lot going on here. So we'll restore some health to Bilbo. Bilbo's taken a bit of. Uh, of a brunt here. Um, so this uh, stalwart is a powerful keyword that gives a unit one extra action each round. So that is very handy. And a unit was just uh, summoned. So we can, uh, uh, with a summon icon, <clears throat> so units with a summon icon aren't played directly. Instead, they appear as a result of a triggering effect. So summon units are exempt from enters play effects like uh, from advanced war warning or thick webs. So that's good to know. That's where uh, um, this uh, spider came from, I believe. Okay, 
So uh, we're going to add stalwart to uh, who would be good. Uh, <clears throat> let's uh, add to glow in. One is pretty good. All right. So what uh, what do we got here? Exhaust every ally that enters play. Exhaust one random ally during upkeep, and then uh, plus one threat for each unwounded enemy. So that is one that we are going to want to get rid of because that hurts our threat oh, ability. And there we go. And uh, so let's see here. This one is the, uh, the locked one. Apply one progress for each hazard resolved. Okay, so that's interesting. We probably should have used uh, Arwen then uh, for the extra action. Um, if that's the case huh all right so we're going to um so exhaust an ally that enters play so we need to advance this one here and the hive guardian now that has guard and stalwart so the hive guardian is a bit of a tough uh, tough character there all right, so we're going to uh, put in a guard. Those with the power. Oh, but the guard's exhausted because we didn't finish that uh, that uh, objective. So that was a mistake on my, on my part. But we're gonna get rid of that one. The poor Glowin's really taking a beating. Um, so we're gonna put in the Sarnford Sentry. Oh no, we don't have enough resources. Okay, so what we're gonna do here then is we're going to. Uh, we're going to crush this stalwart guy and get rid of the stalwart. So you don't have to worry about them uh, next time. It's a new round. And we're looking a, kind of worse for wear, but uh, we'll, well, I think we'll be able to pull this one out. All right, so we're going to obviously heal. I'm not sure if it'll matter, but we're going to heal uh, Glowin. So we received a card with the fleeting keyword. And fleeting leaves play at the end of the same round in which they're played. So um, they can, uh, upon arrival, choose to draw three cards, deal three damage, or minus three threat. So that's kind of an interesting, uh, interesting choice. So uh, we would probably want to. Well, first of all, I think we're going to need to protect Glowin here. So I think uh, what we are going to do is uh, we're going to click a uh, defense with Bilbo here because I knew the strong spider was going to attack uh, next there. So uh, let's resolve uh, one of these objectives. Exhaust. Uh, all right, let's do this here. Got that ended. We just need to finish off the last uh, objective here and we have uh, enough uh, let's see so Gandalf uh, can draw three cards deal three damage uh, well let's just uh, demonstrate the uh, oh no we need five uh, resources for that that's why we can't play it so let's play uh, Sam Everything now Sam has block the and this reduces the damage taken from each attack by one so it's a nice little shield there now we've got treachery in play, so hopefully this doesn't uh, hurt us too badly. Let's see, Sauron gets a hatchling spider in play. Uh, maybe we should actually attack that hatchling spider before there's any damage done. And we've got some flying bats. Uh, we're going to finish off this uh, uh, this objective, but. Uh-oh, Bilbo's captured. The spiders swarm all around. And uh, Bilbo is uh, is captured. Bilbo, no! <laughs> so, uh, so that we're going to leave it on a cliffhanger, uh, which is kind of spiders. neat. Uh, so anyway, that's the the nuanced concepts and gives you an idea of how the, uh, the game plays. Uh, I hope this video has helped you. I know it ran a little bit long, but... Uh, there's really no way of, of uh, flying through the tutorial the way it's set up. It needs to be played each, uh, uh, played all the way through. So, but, uh, but again, looking forward to posting some other content on this game. And if you have any comments or questions or anything, 
uh, please uh, add them to the comments section below. Give us a like while you're down there, and we'll see you here next time on Legendary Tactics.